All the next speakers, which is Catherine Schutz, and um, I haven't told uh, Catherine, but uh, but the reason why we we picked you out for an oral presentation was actually the word patents, because uh, we feel uh, that perhaps it's a part of the literature we sometimes tend to overlook. So uh, that's not to make you nervous. It was just to <laughs> to say that we would like to have this angle on, on the patents also presented here. So, so. Um, good afternoon. Thank you, Chairman. And I'd like to thank the organizers to give me the opportunity in a couple of minutes next couple of minutes I have to present you some results um, on a study we performed on therapeutic nanoparticles and looking especially at the patent literature and uh, the toxicity assessment in patents. So the purpose uh, of this study uh, was in the frame of the Nano Impact Net project. Um, so what we wanted to do is kind of have a state of the situation of uh, particles that are used for therapeutic applications either already on the market or in clinical trials. And by looking at patents, we wanted to have an idea of what will be the next um, generation of particles that we will have on the market for therapeutic applications in the next 10 or 20 years. Um, so I'd like to emphasize that I have only looked at a human voluntary exposure of particles. So this only means particles that I use in a uh, therapy or for imaging uh, diagnostic purpose. Um, so by looking uh, quickly at the market, we found over 40 uh, nanoparticulate systems that are already used in clinics since um, the, uh, the 90s. So in the majority, they are what we call soft uh, nanoparticles. So this means polymer nanoparticles, liposomes. Um, so you can see more than 40% are actually liposomal formulations of drugs that were already uh, known, or protein, um, polymer drugs or polymer protein conjugates, so mainly pegylated drugs. Um, and a few of them were are already uh, what we call hard nanoparticles, meaning metal, oxide, um, or nano, drug nanocrystals. And then look, look, looking uh, at what is already now in clinical trials, we found over 15 uh, part particulate systems in phase three, meaning that they have a very good chance of being on the market in the next years. Um, but ag again, a vast majority, both in phase three and phase one and two clinical trials are what we call soft nanoparticles. So a lot of liposomes, a um, lot of pegylated drugs, um, some micelles, polymer particles, etc. cetera. Um, so, from this, we went on to look at uh, the patent literature. So for our methodology, methodology I worked uh, with an expert from the Swiss Institute of Intellectual Property. So we used the tag uh, B82Y5, uh, which, def which is defined as nanobiotechnology and nanomedicine related patents. So this is a tag that's used internationally. Um, it's uh, the same as the Y01N, if anyone is familiar, they just changed the name. So anyway, we had over 22,000 patent families. Uh, we narrowed down by using different keywords uh, to make sure we were actually looking at particles. So by using liposome particle, micelle, carbon uh, nanotube, nanorod, etc. And as well, uh, looking at some keywords related to toxicity. So. Um, if they had uh, claims about biocompatibility, safety, uh, toxicity, etc. So really to narrow down to what our concern was. Uh, we did exclude anything that was not purely uh, therapeutic. So we didn't look at cosmetics, for example. And uh, to have a sort of definition, uh, we excluded everything that was microsize or that was not clearly a nanoparticle. For example, peptides or ligands that could use nanoparticle as an example of carrier, but was, wasn't uh, the focus proposed. So finally, uh, we looked at only public, uh, published da data from 2007 to 2011, and we reviewed uh, over 250 patents. And these are f a few of the results. So of these 252 patents, 40% uh, did include toxicological evaluation, evaluation of the materials. So this is really uh, toxicity data 
um, of the materials itself. So either it's the carrier alone, um, or it's the nanoparticulate system, uh, but targeted not looking at um, the organ or the cells that would be targeted for an application. So we're not looking at um, cancer, cyt cytotoxicity of cancer cells, for example. Um, and what are the types of uh, methods that are used in patents? So a vast majority is cytotox cytotoxicity assessment. Um, and I do have to point out that uh, more than 30% of the patents that did have toxicological evaluation included two or more uh, types of methods. So often it would be cytotoxicity and in, vo in vivo toxicity, or including biodistribution, blood clearance, or in some rare cases, uh, genotoxicity or degradation of the uh, material products. Um, so as I said, it was cytotoxicity was the major assessment used, uh, mainly metabolic activity. So it's what you would call pretty simple tests, but this is really what is used by um, the industry or uh, the groups that are patenting uh, your, their products. Um, and then looking a little more in details of what is being patented. Um, so here we have uh, the repetition of the types of uh, nanoparticles. So we saw now a shift from soft particles, which are known for 10, 20 years, um, to much more hard nanoparticles, so metal nanoparticles, oxides, um, or crystals. Um, and if we look at the different repetition between uh, the groups that contain toxicological evaluation or the ones that did not, uh, repetition is pretty much the same. Um, then we wanted also to look at who is actually patenting in this field, um, mainly because since this was a nano impact net uh, focused project, we want also to know where Europe is uh, situating itself. Um, so we see that a vast majority are coming from North America and actually, actually I should say uh, the US. And then Europe and Asia have pretty much a similar uh, content. And if we looked at uh, specifically the ones that contain toxicological evaluation, we even had a bigger proportion coming from uh, the US or Canada. So at this state, we don't know if this is um, a bias from the patent office, which would encourage more people there to give already toxicological data, or if this is just um, that they have a higher concern for uh, toxicity issues that we have in Europe until now. Um, and finally, we also looked at who is patenting, and uh, these numbers were actually quite astonishing for the expert I worked with, because he was really surprised uh, of the number that come from uh, academics, so from universities. Um, and I actually looked at a sample of patents that were published before 2007, and um, what we saw is that the part from the university is increasing. And there's two hypotheses to this. Either it's because the field is still in the hands of academics, and this is where the, the research and the development is driven, or uh, we also could see it on the other way, and it's because universities are um, patenting much earlier than they used to. Before, maybe we would do the research and then pass on what we thought were good ideas to industry, which would develop a product. And now we have labs that are ready already, uh, to already patent um, their ideas, their products they're developing in the lab. And so, this also means that there might be um, results or information that are not published in the scientific literature or much later because everyone wants to retain their information and uh, file patents. And so, again, looking at the difference uh, between the ones that contain toxicological data or not, um, we also have a bigger proportion of toxicity data coming from uh, patents of academics. And so finally, uh, there's a few points of discussion that have, have been raised by this study. 
Um, first, we saw a shift from soft particles to what we call hard nanoparticles um, that are going to be on the market in the next years. We saw a difference between uh, academic and industry. And what we thought would be a good way to know what industry is doing by looking at patents, now we're seeing that it's actually also a lot of academics that are uh, patenting and putting their information um, in there. Where is Europe situated now? I think we're maybe a little bit behind uh, compared to the US. So this is also um, maybe recommendations and issues that we should uh, get going and address. Um, however, there was a good point, is when we started this study, uh, the expert I work with uh, thought we would never have any chance of finding any toxicity data in patents, which was not the case. So I think there is a very uh, high concern on this question, and people that are developing the materials do have a very early concern um, of the toxicological issues and are already including those in their development. Um, and finally, I think this is also a message to maybe increase uh, the collaboration between the uh, institutes of uh, intellectual property and uh, research labs or R&D departments and industries. Um, patents are quite hard to read through, but there's a lot of good information that is, I think, pretty much unused and which uh, would be a good thing to look at. So finally with this, I would like to uh, thank NanoImpactNet for the funding of this project and thank you for your attention. So one or two very brief questions. <laughs> thank you for that presentation. It was very good. I wanted to ask, how, what sort of information was provided in the patent um, about the particle size? Because there have been some things in the U.S. where it's been called, there have been dental uses, therapeutic dental uses, and it's been called nano, but the particle size is in the micrometer range. Yeah. So I should say, um, yeah, I didn't put the results, but we did look at what characterization methods were used. And I would say the ma vast majority do include uh, either particle size, uh, dynamic light scattering, or other techniques, and uh, electron microscopy. And most of the time, well, this was a criteria of exclusion. So almost all the time, they did have at least an indication of the size. And that's how I excluded the ones that gave uh, like two, two micrometer or higher particle size. So I should say, most of the time, they had pretty detailed information about their characterization. I think we will thank you with this. You. <laughs> and move on to the last speaker. Uh,